I I need to explain myself because literally I had so many thoughts immediately after the race. I reckon within 10 minutes, I was kind of sitting down and I was like, oh no, what have I done? If someone had been like at halfway, you're going to finish this marathon. I wouldn't have finished it. Athletics Australia put on a special marathon in Penrith where people in the able body space have the ability to qualify for Tokyo. Michael and I decided we were going to use that as his last sort of hit out before Tokyo and try and break his world record of 2.19.30. We decided because it was a put on event, we could get as many of our squad in. We wanted to pacemake Michael for as long as we could. I had two other pacemakers who were meant to help me out and they both got injured pretty close to the to the start of the race, which, you know, I was a bit worried about that. Like I wouldn't have a pace that had helped me out for half marathon 21K. And I was texting Jared through the week going, don't go too hard in this race on the night day before, you know, make sure, you know, you can, you can get me through halfway, halfway. So on the morning of the race, I sat at my bed. I, it was like self-talk, I'm like, all right, like this is Rogues has been working towards this for six months. Like this is his one goal that he's been working towards. I need to bury myself to get to halfway. The course probably suited Jared in, in terms of it was a it was a five k loop, so he could once he'd done it once or twice, he knew knew the turns and stuff. I guess being visually impaired, sometimes the courses don't favour. For the first fifteen k, it was Jared, Philo, our coach, and and me basically in a pack. And, that was great. We were just having a conversation. Our coach, Philo, had the whip out. I went a little bit too quick. So then Philo, <laughs> Philo yelled at me. Something along the lines of, Quickly, what are you doing? You're going to burn him. And then he ran to the front of the pack and I like, got a shot of adrenaline because I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> he steadied the ship. Philo went to 16K and Rose asks me, Oh, how many laps do you have left? And I go, Oh, definitely one, maybe two. But like don't bank on it. I remember I got to 20k and Jared you know got my drink and then like, Jared's like do me to hold hold your drink and yep gave him my drink and you know he probably ran with that drink bottle for about one kilometer and I was like oh, good that's not nice you know it's saving my arms saving my energy and we got to 25 I'm like which is another lap so 25k in and I'm like you got another lap in you he's like yep got another lap in me and then I get to that and then I'd be like ah oh, I'm not completely cooked like maybe I'll just do another lap. And because it was laps, it was like, well, if it hurts, I can just pull out and it won't be that far to walk to anywhere. Then sort of from, from 30K, we sort of went a, bit, went a bit quiet, the conversations between us, you know, we were both start to, well, I was starting to definitely strain a bit. It was around that same point where Rogue said to me, oh, my hamstrings are starting to cramp. And the thought that enters my head there is, well, What's the point of me pacing him the first 27 Ks and then pulling out at the moment when he starts to struggle the most? His vision around 30 K, 31 kilometers started to get a bit funnier for him. And like, he was like, oh, Rogues, I'm seeing black spots in my eyes. Can you like count me into these corners? And I was like, what? And so then like around some of the difficult corners, I'd start to lead in and he'd just follow me then like, would get out of the corners and then come straight back in front of me to pace me. He got through 35 Ks easy, he's coming towards the point that we were on the course. And then I sat down. That was sort of his mindset. He got Michael to as far as he could go and he was he was happy with that. And I just remember Philo running up to me and saying something like, You've got this far, Jared, you might as well finish the race. You can probably just jog around now and break the world record in your class. Oh, do you want me to? <laughs> And he sort of just sat up, like he was pretty spent, but he just looked at me and he was, I think he just wanted affirmation from me that he was on my out to finish. I wandered down the other side of the course and I saw Jared keep on running and I was like, oh, this is like crazy. I'm hurting, but this guy's just paced me for 35k and he's jumped back in the race. You have one, one athlete who does a special thing, but to have a both in the same race where you're a part of, like, is pretty, pretty amazing. You know, people look from the outside and think running is an individual sport, but we've got a really tight team. And when you're running for your teammates, you can pull off superhuman feet. It was just one of those days that yeah, I'll never forget. I didn't think I was going to run a marathon when I was 21, especially not by accident. <laughs>